If you are building a high powered RF amplifier for your transceiver project, something like this 100 watt uh, design using a pair of MRF454s, you will need to possibly use one of these output transformers. These transformers get quite hot during operation, so the recommendation is to use Teflon wire. This uses Teflon wire which I have salvaged out of a, a, um, a, a TV set, a, a plasma TV set which had plenty of Teflon wire in it. However, if you don't have Teflon wire, here's another possible solution that might help you get out of trouble. So here we have a core made up of a couple of ferrite sleeves uh, ready to take some uh, wire. Normally these transformers will have uh, one turn consisting of the tubes shorted at one end and four, maybe three, four or five turns of wire through the core. These will go to the output load. So what I've done here is I've got some 0.9 millimeter copper wire and copper wire is the best for RF rather than tin copper wire as the RF signals tend to travel on the outer surface of the copper and that's uh, got better conductivity than tin. Here's some 1.5 or 1 millimeter heat shrink, just normal heat shrink. What I've done here is I've thread the heat shrink over the enamel copper wire and I've then heat shrunk the heat shrink over the the enamel wire. I use the uh, uh, temperature from my heat gun which comes with the soldering iron and I use the 480 degrees uh, centigrade. Now that's a very high temperature and the heat shrink did not melt, it simply shrunk. In fact applying a, a lot of heat to the heat shrink tube basically it doesn't melt, it, it just sort of goes all funny and soft. So. And it's unlikely your amplifier is going to hit 480 degrees C. If it does, I'd say the amplifier is in big trouble. So heat shrink over enamel copper wire might be a good uh, temporary solution if you can't find any Teflon wire. This particular design uh, requires a number of capacitors across the primary of the output transformer. Here I've added four 330PF 500V Vichy ceramic capacitors across the primary winding. You see them down there. Now having done that I'll now wind uh, the wire through the core. I will need more capacitance but when I, I'm going to add the capacitance across the top later on because I may need to, to uh, adjust the value to suit the particular load and, and uh, transistors I'm using. So here we are we've started uh, putting the wire through the core. I've put a little bit of silicon spray inside the tubes so that the wire goes in smoothly without uh, you know hopefully rubbing on the edges of the tubing and causing a nick or a damage to the um, um, heat shrink sleeving. I've now completed the winding of the transformer I've got five turns through this transformer this is the side driven by the transistor collectors and you can see the capacitors under the loops and this is the end going to the RF output I had no trouble getting five turns through these cores. Uh, the silicon lubricant I sprayed inside the cores uh, made it quite easy. Um, when building it, try to just gently pull the wire through rather than uh, tugging on it. Guide it through with your fingers and use your thumb on the, end, the loop end so it doesn't come out uh, too large a loop. So this is a, uh, a low cost uh, solution to um, trying to obtain Teflon wire of the right uh, size that will fit these transformers.